going back to work after burn injury is not always easy. Um, the timing is important. Uh, quite a few people need to be involved in um, helping the patient determine when is the right time. Um, involves the employer to make sure that they have a job available or if they have a transitional job. Involves the physician who can assess if the patient is ready to go back to work from the medical standpoint. It takes a physical therapist or occupational therapist to make sure that they have the physical strength, the grip, the pinch to go back uh, to work. Sometimes it takes a psychologist to assess if they are really emotionally ready to sort of go back to, to their life that they had before the burn. Oftentimes we suggest a patient return to work maybe sooner than they would anticipate um, because from our standpoint, um, what we've seen by doing this for many years and what our research shows is the sooner a person can return to work, the better their quality of life. It's one of the major, uh, major steps of getting their life back again and returning to a sense of normalcy. And the sooner patients can return to work, the better they do in the long term. And that's really uh, for a number of reasons. Um, Returning to employment gives a sense of confidence and self-efficacy, and it reminds them of their, their previous uh, life, their normalcy. They're contributing to the family again. Uh, they're no longer a patient. So returning to work is a very important aspect of the recovery. I think the key things that contribute to a successful return to work plan are, uh, number one, communication with the employer that early communication with the employer and if, and if there is a supportive employer. You have patients that have been at the same place for years and, and the employer just wants to do anything they can to get them back. They've been a good employee, they want them back, they'll hold the job, they'll do accommodations and do that. Uh, and, and even some employers, even if somebody's only been there a year or two, uh, it's just the culture of the workplace that the employer is going to step up and do what they can with that. Uh, it was definitely a long road. Um, it was, I remember being excited. It, my hand, my left hand was buried bad enough that they buried it in my abdomen. Burned bad enough, rather, that they buried it in my abdomen. And so they left it in my abdomen for five weeks, at, at which point they had me in a drug-induced coma. So um, they... They stitched it in there and, and comatose me so I wouldn't uh, move the hand around or try to pull it from my abdomen so it could grow new fatty tissue inside of my abdomen. At which point they pulled it out and then grafted it. So during the recovery process, I remember being so excited that they had a, a machine that would actually physically exercise my hand all day long. Um, and so they would, they would adjust it accordingly and I remember being excited that my hand would bend this much. That was my main um, concern, as well as the doctors, is, is that I thought that I would lose all function in my hand. And so even now when I go back, they're just really impressed that it's come to full healing and, and is fully functional. And Personally, I don't know what it's like. I can only uh, extrapolate from what I have witnessed my patients, and I have been taking care of patients for 20 years, and I have seen what they and their families go through, but I personally am not sure that I can put them se myself in their shoes. I think one of the things that they experience is that their whole life has all of a sudden been thrown out the window. You can imagine how you feel when all of a sudden you are faced with extraordinary pain. You don't know what the next step is going to be. The doctors, such as myself, come into your room and say, well, we're going to watch and see how your wounds heal, and we might operate, we might not. You're going to be in the hospital for one day for every percent burn. So if you have a 50% burn, you might be in the hospital for two months. We think we know what it's like, but in fact, we don't. We, in, in many ways, uh, we can't uh, 
put too much expectations on patients, I think, about how they should be reacting and how they should be coping and how they should be covering at any one moment. That I've learned over years that patients come to the situation, the trauma, very differently. Based on their life experiences, their upbringing, their social background, their support system. And uh, I think, first of all, we have to step back and accept the patient for who they are, that uh, uh, they may not meet our expectations of how to deal with their uh, recovery and their rehabilitation. But once we do that, then we, then we meet them where they're at and uh, help them in the best way we can, given how they cope, their psychological adjustment, their physical adjustment, their family support, and all that. So uh, it's important to not have a set model of recovery in mind, but really be individualized and work with the patient and their family. Sometimes patients are overly optimistic about what they can do and think they can go back to work too early. And a lot of times I caution patients that it's important to go back to work and be successful. That the worst thing that can happen is to go back to work too early, not do well and fail at that return to work. Uh, and then the work environment, your coworkers, your boss, everybody has that perception that you, that you can't do the job anymore. But if you wait a little while and go back gradually, you might be more successful with that. So some people might be very eager to go back to work and, and at times we may hold them back a little bit and say, let's take your time and make sure this is a successful return to work plan. We are able to tell the patient that, yes, you had an injury, but you are not sick. We want you to be active, do everything you can. At this point, at this point, your limitation is to keep your wounds clean and dry. But other than that, you can really do pretty much anything else you want. So if you have any projects around the house, please do them. Don't sit at home, don't watch television, don't spend your time resting. We want you to build your stamina and get to the point that uh, you can actually do your work when you go back to work. My uh, mantra when I talk to patients is the more you do, the more you're going to be able to do. And so if a patient is getting back to work but isn't quite ready, I tell the patients, I want you to go home and I want you to do everything you might do in the workplace but do it at home. So I don't want you being a couch potato. I want you in the workshop. If it's a male patient, I might, with a little bit of a glint in my eye, say, you know what? Your wife, I'm sure, has a honeydew list. Start tackling that honeydew list. If I have patients with arm burns, I'm going to say, you know what? I don't know whether your kitchen needs to have your ceiling painted, but you need to paint your ceiling. You need to make your wife a new bookcase. You need to do something that's going to keep you active, keep you working, keep your skill set up. You're just not ready to do it in the workplace because you may still be on narcotics during the early time after discharge from a hospital, or you may actually be a little bit deconditioned. If you've been in bed for a week, it's going to take on average about three weeks to get back to your previous strength. And so if you're in the hospital for two months, it's going to take six months to get back to what your stamina was prior to the injury. And I think that patients do get frustrated. They get out of the hospital and they expect that everything's going to return to normal. Well, in fact, they need to, it's like going to the gym. They need to build up their strength again. They need to build up their stamina. They need to return to their previous muscle mass. And that takes some time. I think the biggest misunderstanding that, that patients have about returning to work is that they're going to be completely healed 
and have no psychological symptoms of depression or PTSD or anxiety before returning to work. And I think patients are often surprised that we're making recommendations that they return to work when maybe they still are wearing splints or pressure garments or bandages or have symptoms of PTSD or depression when in fact returning to work is one of the best cures for those things. And one of the misconceptions that we often have is that they are not going to be disabled and that there is hope for them to be able to go back to work. Research that Dr. Esselman has done in conjunction with our burn model system suggests that on average most patients are able to get back to work in about three months after their injury. It always infuriates me when a patient would say, my employer said he wants me to come back when I'm 100%. And I think that is the biggest mistake an employer can make. Um, we are talking about the individuals that have been out of work for you know, one week, two weeks, three, four weeks, sometimes more. Um, and if it's a, a road construction, guy or, or um, a roofer, it's really difficult to just go back after four weeks of being away and do the job just the way they did before. It is a complete loss of money for the company and for the, uh, and for the patient to keep them off work for that long just because the employer wants them to be 100%. I think employers uh, in planning uh, for a person with a burn injury to go back to work really need to reach out and work with the person and the, and the burn team to understand what the limitations might be uh, with that. And uh, some employees, employers are very good at that, but some are, are really not very good at all with that, that they uh, have a very rigid notion of what the job is, uh, that their light duty may not be available, we can't make accommodations, this is a job, and the person can't come back to that job, so we don't want them there. When I think they have to be a little more flexible and work with us to try to be more flexible and look at what other options are there for accommodations, light duty, modified duty. So on physical appearance, uh, occasionally in a store you'll get somebody that'll, that'll ask you a cashier, you notice a, a stare, and, and actually, um, I forget about it often. So I'll be walking around a store and I'll notice somebody staring at me and uh, usually a young inquisitive kid. And, um, and so at first you, you think, what are they looking at? And then you, you think for a second and, and remember, oh yeah, that, you know, and uh, sometimes they'll ask. And if so, you know, it's, um, I'm happy to talk about it or, or tell them or um, as, even as I was in the hospital, you would see kids, so it's a good, a good introduction to, uh, to kids to stay away from fire, you know, leave fire alone and, and use it as much of a, a learning uh, example, show and tell, I guess, if you will. I would love to increase awareness uh, in the general public about burn injuries and the importance of patients' uh, recovery. One of the uh, things that I often think about is that I often don't see patients with burn injuries out in the community. I don't know whether or not that's because they have a restricted, a self-restricted access. We have uh, a patient who has been very involved with our outreach program. And she's uh, a woman who was injured when she was a high school graduate, just uh, getting ready to start her life, go to college. She fell into a fire uh, when she was at a graduation party. And she told a story that is very typical of what our patients experience. She says that she was it was a hot summer day. She had her car at a gas station and she was wearing shorts and a tank top. And another customer came up to her and told her that she should be ashamed of herself for going out into public dressed like she was 
exposing her scars to uh, the world. We'd like to eradicate that attitude. We would like to educate the public about how patients with burn injuries are not contagious. They can be normal functioning members of the community. And we want to eradicate the idea that they need to stay indoors and hide. Our burn patients have such a great opportunity to contribute and we want to maximize that. When people with burn injuries are going back to work, uh, I think uh, everybody might be a little bit nervous that this individual had a major trauma, was, was at Harborview for a long time. Now they're coming back to work. It might be a couple of months later. It might be six months later. So I think everybody's a little bit nervous, and people may not know how to act around that individual. Do they, and do they need to act differently? Do they, how do they approach them? How do they interact with them? Can they do the job? Can they not do the job? So uh, I would recommend some, even before the person comes back, some interaction with the employer and the coworkers to uh, set the stage for a successful return to work. And maybe identifying one coworker as almost a coach in a way, as being the key point person there to make sure everything's going uh, well uh, day in and day out on the job. Because the boss might not even be on site, might be someplace else with that. But if there's a coworker coach right there to uh, make sure the person's doing okay. And if they need a break, take a break. And if they need a little extra time to do something, make sure that they have that extra time. People might find that social interactions might change um, when they go back to work. Um, you know, for example, um, people might be a little bit more cautious or you might notice that people are avoiding, uh, avoiding more. Um, not sure how to interact, not sure how you're doing. So we always encourage patients to make the first move, make the first gesture, make the first smile to let people know, hey, I'm okay, it's all right, you can talk to me, things are going well. Um, reach out to them. Some very, very simple things that we can uh, do and recommend that will help the patient kind of survive the, survive the first couple of weeks on the job after going back to work. Um, we almost never release a patient to go back to work on Monday. We would recommend to go back to work on Wednesday. Then you have a couple, two or three days of work. You'll be exhausted, but you have a weekend to recover, and then you start your week. We recommend a gradual return to work. Uh, it will be f four hours a day for the first week, six hours a day for the second week, and eight hours by the third week. We would recommend to the patient to really stick with the plan so they can actually really prove it to the employer that they are capable of doing the job and that they are uh, improving from day to day and week to week. When you go back to work, take a couple extra t-shirts with you, especially for patients that had the burns on their back or torso or in the axilla area. We will ask them to bring a couple extra t-shirts so if you sweat a lot at work, you can change that. Bring a little towel. Um, for patients that have burns to their hands, we will advise them to get thin cotton gloves so the uh, working glove will be touching and rubbing on the other glove, then not on their skin. So just a, a, a really simple, uh, uh, simple recommendations that can make the process a little bit easier. And we also tell patients to do expect some increase in symptoms. You're going to be exhausted. You may hurt a little bit more. But this will go away, and it will get better with time. Some of the major psychological barriers that would impact somebody's ability to return to work um, would be symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder, 
symptoms of depression, um, sleep deprivation, and some body image concerns. Um, and post-traumatic stress disorder tends to be more of a significant issue if they were burned out the, on the workplace. They were burned on the job, and now they need to go back to that job. Um, and some of the symptoms that they may experience would be uh, nightmares or flashbacks about the injury um, or about the accident, a uh, sense of hypervigilance or being on edge, that the world just isn't a safe place anymore, uh, a tendency to avoid, so to avoid the situation or the circumstance where they were injured. All of those things are a very normal response to this type of significant trauma. Um, it's part of the human condition in this fight or flight response, so it's very normal, um, but we need to help them overcome it so they can return to work successfully. think there are very simple adjustments that can allow you to return to your previous job, but the, the employers and the patients need to be educated about what options there are. That's why it's very helpful, I think, that patients have access to a vocational counselor who has experience in working with employers and has experience in talking to patients about what has worked for them in the past. If you have a patient who is an outdoor worker and is going to be exposed to the environment, many of our patients may have sensitivity to heat or to cold. So if you work outdoors, maybe you need to uh, be careful about wearing clothes that are warmer and so you don't get cold in environments that are cold. Or if you're a kitchen worker and you're constantly at the stove, you might be sensitive to the extreme temperatures and so there may need to be some adjustments with either your protective garments or maybe instead of working at the, the stove, you're going to have to be the prep chef or something like that. I think when you look at and research that we've done looking at barriers to return to work after burn injury. Uh, we did a study to really look out to a year and had the patients, the individuals with the burn injuries, identify what were the barriers that they were recognizing pre preventing them from returning to work. And the results were kind of interesting that early on after the burn injury, you know, there are issues with the, the wounds, the scars and the healing. Uh, there are issues with physical issues uh, with that. There are issues with uh, work conditions, the, the, that the work environment, the work conditions are too harsh with that. And by and large, what we found out that over the first six months, over the year, for those individuals who were still not back at work at eight, nine months after their burn injury, those wound issues kind of decreased, the physical issues decreased, and a lot of it was that psychosocial issues that were coming in at that time. People were reporting that they were uh, having nightmares. They were afraid to go back to their workplace. Uh, they were reporting uh, symptoms of depression, and some of those psychological issues come in then. So I think it's important to recognize that uh, Early on, we focus on the physical issues so much, uh, but at some point, it's more the psychological issues and uh, sometimes counseling, psychological support is really what's needed at that time uh, to get somebody back to work.